I'm sure you've got a ton of passwords you need to remember and store, and a password manager can not only make this easier, but a lot safer too. With a little bit of know-how, 1Password is an excellent tool to do just this and more. So let's get into it in this simple 1Password tutorial. First, we need a subscription and to download the 1Password app. If you want the best price, I'll add my discount links in the description, or you can scan the QR code here to check it out. The 1Password installation is easy. You can download the app via both Google and Apple stores, or you can get the app directly from their website by heading to the download section and clicking the blue button. Next, double click the setup installer, click next, follow some on-screen instructions, and finally, you'll need to either log in or sign up. During registration, you'll be prompted to install the browser extension. I recommend doing this as it'll make auto-filling passwords as you visit websites much easier later on. To do this, just click Add Extension, and after a few seconds, it'll appear in the corner of your browser. I'll expand more on this later, but for now, continue creating your 1Password account and be sure to make a solid password. This will be your key to gain access to the app, so it must be strong. Without this key, you won't be able to access your vault because 1Password employees do not know or store your password. Write this down for now so it's ready to add to your emergency kit in a moment. You'll also get a security key during registration. This is a 34-digit code that you'll need to enter alongside your password when signing into new devices. Once you've created an account, be sure to check your downloads to see if your emergency kit was downloaded. If not, you can find it through your name in the top right corner. Add your password to your emergency kit and keep it somewhere safe. You might need it to regain access in the future. Next up in our 1Password tutorial, you should set up two-factor authentication. This will add an additional layer of security to the login process, making sure nobody else can access your vault if they aren't in physical possession of the device that you use to authenticate your account. To do so, tap your name in the corner, then Manage Account, select More Actions, Manage Two-Factor Authentication, and finally, Set Up App. Now on a mobile device, you'll need to download an Authenticator app. Authy is what I use, it's free and simple. Once you've got that, use your mobile to scan the QR code you see on your 1Password account, and a six-digit number should appear within the Authy application. You want to take this and head back to your 1Password account, tap Next, and finally enter the code and click Confirm. This might seem lengthy, but trust me, it is worth it. Now nobody can access your vault except you. Still with me? Good, because now all the main 1Password setup stuff is done. To add your first password, tap New Item and choose the item category. Here you can enter the credentials and then even create a password using a generator tool. This shows the strength of your passwords and means you don't have to use any brain power trying to come up with complex combinations. And once you're finished, simply click Save. And at any point, you can edit the entries by selecting the password and clicking Edit. All of your passwords will live in the All Items section, but once you've got a collection, I'd recommend creating vaults. This makes password management much easier. For example, here I'm gonna create a Socials Vault by simply tapping this plus button. I'll then drag and drop any social media credentials here. If any passwords get misplaced, simply use the search bar at the top to find and move them. And another tip from me to you, I recommend dragging and dropping items that you use most into the favorite sidebar. Also, I like that I'm not limited to storing only passwords. I can store other information too. For example, let's say for the sake of this video, this is my Wi-Fi password. I'll add it as a new entry, categorize it as wireless router, and I can even change the icon so it's easier to find at a glance. I can add relevant tags over here, such as Wi-Fi, or even drag and drop it into the relevant tag section on the sidebar. And once I'm done, I can drag and drop it into a specific vault too. While tags aren't totally necessary, it can make categorization much easier, especially if your banking details have finance tags and stuff like that. There are even templates you can use. But what if you already have passwords in another system? 1Password supports tons of importing options and makes the process very straightforward. Say I want to take my passwords from Chrome. I open up the Chrome menu in the toolbar, choose Passwords and Autofill, then Google Password Manager. Next, select Settings in the sidebar and tap Download File under the Export Passwords section. Here you'll enter your laptop's password and finally save the Chrome Passwords.csv file to your device. Now that you have the CSV file, open 1Password and press Import. Next, tap Chrome, 
And finally, choose your CSV file and the specific account you'd like to export into. Once this is done, and you're sure you've got all your passwords within the app, I'd recommend deleting your passwords from Chrome as well as the CSV file. If you want to import from another password manager, generally you'll need to first export your data from that password manager and then migrate using the 1Password app. The instructions vary depending on the password manager you're exporting from, but if you have questions, hit me up in the comments below. What I like best about 1Password is that the entries can be securely shared with anyone they don't even need a 1Password account. Say I want to share that Wi-Fi password we created with my friend. I select it and click Share. This will generate a shareable link, and now I just need to choose the expiration date and who it's available to. In addition, if you get the 1Password family plan, you can share entire vaults. The admin can choose who views which vaults and still have vaults for each user that work independently from the shared ones. I'd argue that overall, 1Password has the best admin control that I've ever used with any family plan. Don't forget you can get the best deal for both 1Password family and individual plans down in the description. But what about autofill and autosave? You'll find these staple features in the 1Password browser extension. You'll first need to log in. Next, simply open a web page. Now the first time you enter login credentials, you'll see this pop up. And all you'll need to do is tap Save in 1Password. You can even edit the title and the vault you'd like it to be saved in by pressing this button here. Now let's reopen this same web page and try to autofill the credentials we've just saved. And there we go. I just simply choose it from this field here. Sometimes two items can be suggested, so just use the arrow to select the correct one. Moving on in this 1Password guide, pass keys can also be used within your browser. Essentially, pass keys are an easier and safer alternative to passwords because you don't actually need a password, only another device. Pass keys can be stored, edited, and shared just like traditional passwords. And then when you want to use it for any logins, just tap Sign in with Passkey, and then select it from the list of pass keys. You'll then need to use biometrics on your other device to authenticate the login instead of a password. Now let's talk through how to use 1Password features, starting with a core feature that I use most days, Watchtower. This tool will actually notify you if passkeys are available for websites where you have entries saved, but it does a lot more than that too. It's ideal for beginners because it offers an at-a-glance overview of the health of your accounts. If a password is old, reused, or weak, Watchtower will let you know. And if you've added 2FA, it'll say so down here. Overall, it is an extremely useful tool. Privacy cards are another handy feature that enhances the security of online shopping. This not only protects my real banking information, but also if the privacy card was ever stolen, it can only be used on this site. Anyway, you can set these up after you've created a privacy card account. Once they're added to your 1Password vault, you can autofill them as you visit websites. What about a password manager tutorial for different operating systems? Well, I won't expand too much here, but 1Password offers apps for Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, and Linux. The interface stays fairly consistent across the different apps, making it easy to switch between devices. And 1Password even syncs all your information, so everything will be accessible regardless of which device you have at hand. But how helpful is 1Password for beginners, specifically? You'll be happy to hear that there are step-by-step -step guides on 1Password's website. Otherwise, there is 24-7 chatbot support, though if you want to connect with an actual living, breathing human, the only way to do that is through their online form. Okay, if you still don't have a 1Password account, let me give you some quick tips about subscriptions. Of course, my first one, the links below will give you the best and cheapest deals on 1Password plans, so don't forget to take a look. But apart from that, there's an individual plan and a family plan. The biggest difference is that the family plan allows for five users, each with their own login and individual vaults. In terms of length, I recommend going for the longer subscriptions as this gives the biggest savings overall. All things considered, 1Password is an excellent tool, and I'd say one of the best password managers on the market for a beginner. With a good amount of features, affordable plans, and smooth applications, I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching this 1Password tutorial for beginners. See you around.